We're going to look at Hebrews chapter 10 and also Hebrews chapter 12. There's only 13 chapters of the book, but uh, every word of God is inspired. So there's just so many wonderful verses in the word of God to look at and study. And uh, I had the privilege of taking the book of Hebrews as a class at Dallas Seminary, and it just became so much more endearing to my life as to the promises our Lord gives us there. I want to invite you to write something down um, and think about this. But the Puritans, uh, they're not a weird people. Uh, Charles Spurgeon was a 12th generation Puritan preacher. The Puritans, the way they practice life, their children by the age of 12 could quote New Testament doctrines extensively from memory. Wish we could so be as Americans and American Christians. But one of the Puritans' values was this, and it was an axiom they popularized in all their churches and their, amongst their families as members of the churches. Here's the quote, the axiom. Long, unhurried exposure to the Word of God is the quickest route to holiness. Now, may I call us all to remind ourselves, holiness in the Bible equals happiness in life. If you want to know happiness, no holiness. If you want to know stress, don't worry about holiness in your life. Holiness comes from reverencing God. Uh, Proverbs 1.6, Proverbs 9.10 I think it's Psalm 110, verse 11, Sid, says reverence for God is the beginning of wisdom. Reverence for God means holiness in our lives. Reverence means I choose to understand God is God and not Rod. He's smarter, bigger, more powerful, more worthy, and deserving of all my affections. And all my judgments I defer to him. That's reverence, and that's the route to holiness. The Puritans said, long, unhurried exposure to the Word of God is the quickest route to happiness. So every day, I need to be learning to park myself in the Scriptures so that my mind can be defragged from all the stuff I've picked up from my own flesh, from the world, and from the devil, and that I can have clear thinking about what's really important for the day. So Hebrews chapter 10 and Hebrews chapter 12 gets us into some further understanding of why and the what's involved and the how we can experience more of God in our lives. We had a very popular training released in Southern Baptist Life back in the early 90s, I think it was, Experiencing God by Henry Blackaby. And uh, yeah, you know, if, if you can know God's with you today, problems get a lot smaller. Amen? And that's why Paul writes, if God be for us, you know what, who can be against us? But I've got to know he's with me. And as the prophet Azariah, I think his name was, said to King Asa, God is with you when you are with him. It's a walk in this life that he's wanting us to learn. We walk by faith with him, not by sight, not by our feelings, not by our circumstances. Because there's a lot of opportunity to get really stressed out, and discouraged, and just you know, depressed if I just watch my circumstances. Amen? So let's, uh, 10 comes before 12, right? So we'll go to chapter 10 first. All right. And uh, let's begin there at verse 19. As we do, let's bow together in prayer. Father God, thank you so much that you have given us a living word. It even says that here in this book in chapter 4. And it's so sharp, it knows exactly where we are, where we need to go, and how we can get there. 
So God, we ask and pray, truly speak to us. Help us to see wonderful things out of your word and help us not just to stare at them, but help us to put them into use and practice. We ask for that grace and favor in our lives that we can be learning more of you, Lord, your holiness, your ways for us, your wisdom in our lives, and that we can be better representatives of Jesus Christ in this world and better spokespersons for him to others who are desperately looking for him but don't know how to find him unless we tell them. So God, grant us this favor in Jesus' name and for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Now in chapter 10, there is a therefore at verse 5. I think it is because the lights are out here and Don was telling me you've got to look harder, Rod, so you can see your text. I think at verse 5 there's a therefore and now here's a therefore at verse 19. All the therefores in scriptures are always built on what's proceeding and building up to that point in scripture. 10 is just capitalizing on the first nine chapters saying that if all those sacrifices that were practiced in the Old Testament time in the temple would have been good enough, it, we wouldn't have had the need of Jesus Christ stepping out of heaven, coming to this world, becoming like you and I, so that He, the God-man, could show us and teach us how to live to the Father every day with our lives as human beings. Thank you, Don. It is verse 5 and verse 19. Jesus then went beyond just modeling how to live life, but he went through the Roman garrison yard, through Calvary to pay for all my sins, all our sins, and all the sins of mankind. Now that's what's being said at verse 19. Therefore, because he has done this, and when he said it was finished, it was finished. You don't have to keep offering up sacrifices. He is your rock. He is your salvation. He is your savior. He is your sacrifice. He is your living redeemer. He is right there with you in that pew bench next to you. And wherever you go today, if you have Him as your Savior and your Lord, He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He means what He says and He says what He means. Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that He should lie. Neither is He a son of man that He should repent. Has he not said and will he not do it? Has he not spoken and will he not make it good? You can bank on God's word to you. And you can say it and share it with confidence with any person. What he's done for me, he will do for you and more. That's what he wants you and me to know. You might write this down too. You know, God wants every one of us to really know character, courage, confidence, and compassion. There's a bunch more C's we could add to that. But that's enough. If we get the character of God, if we have the courage of a Joshua, of a David, it's all wrapped up in his son. And if you have Jesus Christ, he lives in you. He's just wanting to come out more and more in your life. First to your family members, then to those you work with and live near, and to your friends and your family. He wants to become more evident through your life to others. That's why he says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. You ain't going nowhere unless you stay connected to me. God is with you when you are with him. Let's read about it, how we can do that better. Verse 19, therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, how do you enter into God's presence? Not because of the good things you've done. 
Not because you witnessed to five people this past week. Not because you've read your Bible every day this past week. You do so, I do so, because of Jesus. Because of what he did for us at Calvary. And that's still good to this day. By a new and living way, it says. I'm reading out of the NIV. A new and living way. Just before he goes into heaven, he says to his disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. I am the way, and he is a new way every day. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. God, thank you. Your faithfulnesses are great, and your mercies are new every morning. I pray that every morning. I need to be reminded of it, don't you? I, I need grace 24-7 because I go south without trying. I've already had to confess three or four times wrong thoughts that have gone through my mind this morning already. Before I got to you wonderful people. And since we have a great priest, a great priest. I was in a, one of our other churches earlier today already, and the preacher was talking about next week's game. <laughs> some great players, some great coaches. We have a great. Do you feel that way about him? He wants you to. You can. The word of God tells you you can. Uh, what is it? James 2.1. Um, it says, what does it say? My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. Gloria. He is all the time. Well, what about when I mess up? He is still your glorious Savior, your great high priest. Because he ain't like you and me. When somebody messes up on me, I want to lick my tongue out of them. I want to slap him in the face. You didn't know that about Brother Rod, did you? <laughs> the older I get, Sid, I have to be more careful. I forget those things God's taught me. But our Savior is always welcoming us, isn't he? And doesn't he want us to bear that same spirit to others? Especially to brothers and sisters when we mess up on one another. You jerk! No. Brother, sister, I'm praying for you. Because that's what the Savior is doing. He constantly lives to make intercession for us at the right hand of the Father. Praise our Savior. Praise our great high priest. Praise our glorious Savior. Verse 22, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings. Our faith is anchored in Him because He is a great high priest, because He is a glorious Savior. We can come to Him with confidence, assurance. Because of the great price He paid, we can have great confidence in Him. He loves me. The children's song is the deepest theology you will ever know. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. See, the Bible tells me so. That's why I need to get into this word. Over 7,000 promises. How many of them do you know? I better get to know more than before the day I check out because I need every one of them. And so do you. Having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. You become what you are focused upon. You become what you are committed to. You are becoming what you are aiming and desiring yourself to be and have. 
what you are delighting in. That's why the psalmist writes, delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. How much are you wanting Him? Let's get real. How much time do you watch TV compared to how much time you get in the Bible? Ooh, 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 you're getting too real, preacher. But every time a preacher goes like that, Mary, he's got three fingers coming back at him. Amen? What's your greatest dream? What's your greatest passion? What's your greatest drive for in life? Who can give you the desires of your heart? Who can give you a healthy home? Who can heal your broken dreams? Who can give you strength and energy when you have nothing left? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He is our great high priest. He is our glorious Savior. And just to think, you and I, can become like Him because He invites us to that. He calls us to that. I've lived long enough with Rod Earls. I know what Rod Earls, the skunk and stink he can make. But Jesus, 1 Corinthians 2.14, or is it 2 Corinthians 2.14? The sweet-smelling aroma of Jesus that He wants us to Share that fragrance with those around us. I don't know about you, that sounds pretty good, amen? amen? All that Carol's put up with Rod Earls for all these 47 years, she deserves for me to smell good to her with my attitudes and my actions. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful, and let us consider. I haven't done a word study in that, but I can, we can all pretty well surmise that word consider means to study, become expert upon, dig into, really seek to understand, really have that understanding and information and knowledge with you as you go about your daily experiences as you formulate your thoughts, as you express your attitudes, as you express your words, as you commit your actions, consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Every time I want to slap somebody, God says, hey, Rod, is that going to spur them on? Now, sometimes I need a holy kick from the behind to get me moving on down the road, get me off my duff of laziness or feeling sorry for myself or sucking my thumb or whatever. I need some holy brothers and sisters to say, hey, man, you got more in the tank than you're getting out. I believe in you. Much more importantly, God does. And I want to push you forward. Verse 25, not giving up meeting together. Some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see that they are approaching. There are, again, 50 one another verses in the New Testament. Love one another, pray for one another, encourage one another, exhort one another. Just be there for one another. You will never know the fullness of Jesus Christ, nor will I, unless we're getting around other brothers and sisters on a regular basis. Yes, church, but even more so small groups. All the ways that we can be connecting and encouraging one another, because that's what our Savior is all about. Love God, all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your fellow man as yourself. If we're not doing it amongst ourselves, we ain't going to do it to the lost. But again, to get to know Jesus, do it Jesus' way. He loved hanging out with the 12 and others too. There was 120 when he left, so he must have been hanging out with others as well beside the 12. All right, let's go to chapter uh, 12. Um, what time do we get out of here? 1.30? 2? All right. We've got to start landing this thing. So we're, we, we're talking, you know, basically about the what, the how, and the why. 
And, and chapter 12 is going to give it to us here in these three verses, okay? So the what is all about Jesus Christ. I mentioned a while ago Tim Tebow speaking to 65,000 young adults. You can YouTube that and see, listen to the messages out of the Passion Conference. Uh, again, we used to talk about this a couple of years ago together. Spurgeon, in one of his messages, he's not God, but there's a lot of things in Scripture that really gives legitimacy to this interpretation from Scripture. God is not going to allow Satan to win out in eternity. He's going to have more in heaven than Satan's going to have in hell. Just chew on that and read scripture, okay? But he, Jesus, I didn't say it. Jesus says the harvest is plentiful. He says for us to pray for one another, that we can go and, and be so living that we're encouraging you to be going to those around us that need to hear about our Savior. Because they're longing, they're hungry for something real. And the only real is Jesus. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off. Anybody seen the movie He Has Risen? It came out, what, three years ago? About the centurion that ordered Jesus' death. And he watched Jesus die, and then uh, the report comes around, you know, he's out of the tomb. And, and so everybody was really, you know, and he's ordered to go find the body. Because they're saying, you know, if his disciples stole him, we're going to find him, prove them wrong, and put this whole thing to, you know, to shams. The whole thing about Jesus and his, all that he stood for. Well, as he's searching... You, you got to watch the movie, okay? I'll stop right there. He is risen. You can probably do it on Amazon Prime free. But it's a great movie because it really helps you live out what happened in those next hours. But he becomes so convinced with so many witnesses that believed in Jesus, and then finally he sees Jesus physically himself before the Savior returns to heaven. And he throws off everything in the Roman Empire. And becomes a servant of Jesus Christ and a missionary for him. He turns his back on the whole world. All the status, all the level of attainments he had accomplished. Throw off! Paul says in Philippians 3, I threw it all off. I was going to be the next president of Israel. I was the Pharisee of Pharisees. I was trained by Gamaliel. I mean, I had it. It was all in my hands. But when I found Jesus, it's like the book of Proverbs talks about the real gold and silver of life is fearing and loving God. No amount of money can compare to that. I've been listening to a guy for the last four weeks. Lonnie, this guy was... The Baptist Student Union Director at the University of Oklahoma for over 30 years, Max Barnett. I met him in the 70s. And I, uh, as I've been listening to Max, you can go to discipleshiplibrary.com. You can hear there's 7,000 different presentations there. You can just free. Just put in Max Barnett if you want to listen to this in the search. It's where I go for a lot of Howard Hendricks, a lot of great. Max said he was asked to come over to Romania. I think that was back in the 80s when it was still communist. And uh, he said they wanted him to come because they had heard he had memorized so many scriptures. And because when you, at that time when you came in, I forget, they asked four things. Do you have a Bible? Do you have guns? Do you have pornography? And do you have drugs? That's what they were checking people at the gate. So they said, well, let's come in with a Bible. But we know because you've memorized Scripture, you can give us the Word of God without the Bible. Anyhow, Max says in this one presentation I've been listening to, if they offered me $10 million and said, if we can erase all your memory of the Word of God, we'll give you $10 million. He said, I wouldn't touch it. I wouldn't even look at it. Not 
There's no money, no price of peace of mind, of purpose of life, of power to live it to God. There's no price on that. That's why the Roman centurion threw it away. That's why Paul threw it off, that he could follow Jesus Christ, be faithful and be loyal to him. Hebrews 12, 1 says to us, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. The sin. Every one of us are unique. We're wired differently to God's wonderful entertainment. Amen? And to one another. If we learn to laugh at ourselves and one another, life is fun. You'll never run out of material to laugh at, that's for sure. But you've got a sin that bugs you that doesn't bug me. And I have got a sin that bugs me, that wants to trip me up, that won't even bother you. Each one of us need to be wise. Here's a definition of wisdom, if you want to write it down. Wisdom is the proper understanding and response to self-awareness, others' awareness, and Spirit of God awareness. How does that fit? If you're not aware of your weaknesses, you're going to be stumbling all through your life and never know why. God says you've got a sin. Your temperament, your past, the hurts you've gone through, that's just, you've you got to be wise to that. The devil can suck you back in there real quick. Unless you're staying on your knees, staying with your eyes focused on Jesus, we're going to see in the next verse. Unless you're staying honest, Lord, without you, I'm nothing. And I ain't going anywhere without you. Guiding me, keeping me, strengthening me, showing me. And let us run with perseverance. Now he's going to say at the end of verse 3, don't lose heart. I love what Isaiah told the king. Isaiah 7, verse 4. Say to him, be careful. Stay calm. Do not be afraid. Do not lose heart. I don't know about you, but my mother called me a worry wart growing up. I, I need all four of those things said to me every day. Do not lose heart. Run with perseverance. We all need perseverance. We all need endurance. Our, our Savior could have thrown the towel in. So many times. So many times. I mean, can you imagine he poured his life into those 12 guys and one of them. And, and that one, that, that Judas Iscariot, he still washed his feet, didn't flinch when he got to Judas that night. Washed his feet just like all the other 11. He never broke character. He never broke away from the Father's will. In Gethsemane, run with perseverance. Who can help you run with perseverance? It's in verse 2. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. If you stare at Rod Earls, hopefully a few times that'll help. <laughs> a lot of times it ain't. But you stare at Jesus. You, you'll never regret it. You'll never go south if you stare at Jesus. In a, a struggle, a temptation, a trial, a hardship, he'll keep you through it all. Through it all. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. He inspires that faith in us. He sustains that faith in us. 
and he will complete that faith till the race is done. And we have so many witnesses around us having proven that truth by what Jesus taught them and what he allowed us to see of him through them. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. I've been trying to learn one of the Psalms. It's Psalm 35, verses 4 and 5. I called to the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. We have a glorious Lord Jesus Christ. We have a great high priest. I uh, like to watch a set of movies with my grandson that um, it was the Richard Warren Bram ministry that produced these Voice of Martyrs. And there's a one of the movies is about a young woman named Petula of the third century. You can Google her name. But um, she was raised in an arist aristocracy, well off. Her husband, I think, had been killed in Roman warfare. And she was living with her parents and raising her young boy, their young boy. And she becomes a Christian. She begins meeting with Christians for Bible study in small groups. And the emperor issues an edict that there's no other worship than, than worship of the emperor. So cut to the quick, she's caught along with others. She's imprisoned. And for a short period of time, they put him in the lion's den to try to send a message to the empire. We are not going to allow Christians to worship another god other than the emperor. And as she is in the lion's uh, in the arena, uh, it, it, just before she dies, um, she, she stops everything, and there's a still in the action of the animals that are attacking. And she's, it says, she said, I won't go to my Lord, looking haggard, forlorn, depressed, scared. She uh, lets her hair down, and she looks forward to meeting her Lord. Because miraculously, the animals weren't able to kill them, so the ruling governor orders their execution by sword by the Roman soldiers to come out and do it. I, I thought about that. Who, for the joy set before him. Our, our Savior really had to go through the suffering that if you've watched the Passion movie by Mel Gibson, he had to go through it all. And it doesn't, it can't reveal, but it does a, a good job of revealing the weight that was really on him was our sins. And the tear that drops out of heaven at the end of that movie was showing the great price the father went through, watching his son do that for us. But in the midst of all that, Jesus always put purpose over problems or always purpose over pleasure. He knew what he was doing. He knew how the grace of God would be won for us. And he knew why. Because he knew God was going to be glorified through billions of lives that would be brought to praise our God. I don't know all the Star Wars movies, but some of those Star Wars movies, a couple of them, I've seen the ending of it when uh, they all come back in, Han Solo, Luke, and you know, they're clapping. There's just thousands upon thousands upon thousands. Yay! Can you imagine what it was when Jesus came back into heaven after leaving this earth? And if you interpret it and read it carefully in Romans 5, there's 100 million angels. Singing. Yay! He's back! Every day, you and I 
I can know that life power in us. Not because of our goodness. My goodness, this is filthy rags, and I know January 26th, the year 2020, Rod Earls' heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. I don't have to guess that. I don't only know that from life. I know myself, but I know that from Scripture. It says in Jeremiah 17, 9, My heart and your heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. You need amazing grace. And I just say this morning to you, if you have not accepted Jesus by your own confession, and volition, asking Him to be your Savior and your Lord. You need Him. And if you have already asked Him into your life, you need to become more intimately acquainted with Him. Long, unhurried exposure. The Puritans also said, Scripture, memory, and meditation are the most profitable disciplines we can practice as Christians to help us know carefully that amazing grace better. Can I ask that we stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed? With all standing, with every head bowed, every eye closed, I just want to, just for a few moments of silence, if you've never asked Christ into your life and you... No, you need to do that this morning. I want to invite you with everybody praying in just these next few minutes. I know it's a little risky, but uh, I won't bite you. I want to ask you to come and just share that with me, and we'll pray, and we'll settle that together. Uh, There's just something, again, about sharing with other Christians that it helps us seal that deal more deeply in our hearts between us and the Savior. So... If that's your need, if that's what God's Spirit has revealed to you, I want to invite you just to come. We'll have a brief prayer together, committing your life to the Savior. So as some are thinking about that and praying, the rest of you who have already asked Jesus to be Savior and Lord, would you ask Him as an already Christian? Lord, would you help me to know how to fall more in love with you in my life? And would you also reveal to me the practices that I can grow and start practicing to help me know that, to know you better in my life? And then one last request of the Christians here this morning. Would you pray, God, Would you send us and help us to send one another out into your harvest? Because we know that God's power is tied to that action in our lives. And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses. There are so many ready hearts and lives that want to hear that message. If you just be willing and ask God to send, He will. And we need to be a sending church family. We, we need to be sending, helping each other, spurring one another on to love and to good deeds. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you so much for being such an awesome Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being such a glorious Savior and great High Priest. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for always comforting us, always being there for us and with us to help us follow Jesus. Oh, thank you. Help us to know you better. Help us to walk in the Spirit, not in the flesh. And oh, God, thank you for such an opportunity. And please... Save us from the hideous sin of hoarding that up to ourselves and not sharing with others that desperately need that good news. So God, would you send us and help us to be sending one another that we can help others and revel with them in your good news and your amazing grace. 
Thank you, Lord, for these words we've looked at. Thank you for these words we've sang about this grace this morning together. We pray this in Jesus' name, and thank you so much for this. Amen. Amen. The announcements, look at them carefully in the book.